Thank you everyone for joining. My name is Tina. This event is being presented by the SGSU Special Library Association Student Chapter, otherwise known as SLASC. Um, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Tina kremsner Shing, and I'm the Programming Director of SLASC. And I wanna give a huge thank you to my programming team, April Pantel and Rebecca Kamathi, and the greater SLASC teams for helping make this event possible. We're super excited to continue our 2021 fall programming with Tess McCarthy, an SJSU iSchool alum. Uh, Tess has had a variety of roles and titles in the LIS field and is currently a lead technical consultant working for the international tech firm Accenture. She drives strategy and governance on their marketing creative team as their global digital asset manager. Always taking a holistic approach to information science, Tess sees herself as a career transitionist, one who can shapeshift roles into a meaningful career that's flexible and seemingly impervious to life's challenges. Please join us to discuss how to create a e-portfolio, guide a career transition, and get your foot in the door of LSI careers. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat, and we will have a Q&A session at the end of this presentation, time permitting. We will also be sharing a brief survey link that will hope you will take at the end of the presentation. And now we hope that you can turn off your videos so that we can save some bandwidth. And yeah. thank you. Let's warmly welcome Tess. Thank you, Tess. Hey, um, good evening and hello. Um, good evening and good morning, really. Um, especially if you're working for a global firm, you don't wanna um, alienate people from all over the world here. Um, so I'm Tess McCarthy. I uh, gave a talk last February and it was more about like how I survived the uh, pandemic and got a job. Um, and then I got the job and then my contract, you know, ended because I did the work that I needed to do. And my father passed away um, from the time, you know, I was taking care of him in February to about May. And in between that time, I got a job at Accenture. Um, so, wow, incredible. I mean, Im imagine, you know, starting um, a job and it's new to begin with and stressful to begin with, and then, you know, have a beloved parent die. I mean, so the thing that, you know, I hope to impart on everybody is that life happens and, and life happens in um, monumental ways. Life happens in very personal ways. Um, so if we can, uh, let's start the slide presentation and um, go from there. I, I just don't see the, the first slide. Yes, do you plan on uh, sharing your screen? I, I do I've been I said at like 615 I don't have access to the screen so let me oh. see if I can try again okay if it doesn't work um, I can pull it up on yeah. my laptop okay all right that's good um so it's just really command s to share my screen yep and I I cannot share my screen um, is it yeah. working if you click on the share screen button on the bottom of the Zoom screen? Um, There's like a little green button that says, um, has like an upward arrow. Yeah, I, I know what it looks like, but it's just really not there. Um, let's see, I have live transcript, I have reactions, I have record, and I do not have share screen. Okay, then I'll Let me try to screen. see if I can, um, yeah, I don't. It's, uh, it's, let's see, usually, um, let me try uh, going into gallery and seeing if I could do that there. Okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not a host, I'm, I'm a guest. It, okay. it was a, it's a, a little glitch, so we'll roll with it. Okay. Um, I we always have to roll with it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I, I think it's a setting um, in, in advanced settings, um, but if you don't have the IT credit, credentials you can't um 
you can't do the setting to allow other people um, in, enabling the, right. the screen share. And yeah. you know, with Zoom, a lot of hijinks happen. You know, yeah. people share you know their adult contents. So <laughs> I get it. <laughs> if there's anybody who gets it, I get it. I I used to be um, I used right. to be at the archivist in residence at the Center for Sex and Culture. So yeah, let's move along. <laughs> okay, great. So and this then is about leveraging. Um, mm -hmm. you mind sharing access to the slides. I think some people are having. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Thank yeah, that was you. my, um, uh, let me share this again. And then I think I made you editor. So let me do this again one more time. Okay. Uh, it's Just so okay. that, yeah. It's going to be gray everywhere. So if you have editor privilege, I, yeah, I, you're, you're able to, you know, I think you're able to do it. Give it one more hit. And then um, if you grab the link in, uh, in chat, um let me see if i can give you another link oh never mind okay um thank you tina thank you april and thank you everybody for coming around here um so how did i get here you see this long text okay we can go to the next slide and this is a drawing i did okay and that's another drawing i did um so how did i get here uh, it's a long-winded you know and um answer but as you can see, anybody's um, career trajectory is going to have a lot of twists and turns, um, unless if your uh, career animal is a badger. Um, why do I talk about that? I um, created a comic for you all that I'm going to share at the end um, of the presentation, like um, after we all wrap up. And um, it's just basically a PDF comic of our talk today, just in case if I missed everything. So there are going to be some people in, in um, here tonight who will, you know, find a job as an archivist at the Federal Reserve Bank and then stay there for 15, 20 years. Okay, so this is still for you, um, but it's more so for the... Um, People who uh, don't really know where wh what they want to do or where they're going, or people who are you know want more out of life and always want to change, and then there are the middle of the road people who you know have to deal with life situations and you know are forced into career transitions. Um, so we can um, go to the next slide. All right, so your e-portfolio, actually, when I was talking with uh, Tina, I was saying, you know what, if I had to do it all over again, I would do it so differently. And I would not abandon my e-portfolio. I would actually uh, leverage it in such a way that I'm always sharing a little bit about myself. Now I had that link, if you can click onto it. So it's that's just a static page of my e-portfolio. But if you actually go into the e-portfolio and you click on official e-portfolio of T. McCarthy, I did this in 2012. My sense of design is so different and this is like a template. Um, but you can uh, click into any competency, and then I'll show you, if, if you type in the password 2812, really? you can password protect your, um, your e-portfolio, which is good because um, you don't want people plagiarizing your work. And I don't think a lot of people to begin with, you know, at SJSU plagiarize. Um, but this is a really solid way to go. And then you can like make, make it more publicly available after you've gotten your degree. Um, so we can pop back into the presentation. All right, and let's see, we could just go to SJSU alumni series. There we go. So this will always change. Um, but, you know, the quirky thing about me is I do like black and white. <laughs> so, okay, we can move on to the next slide. All right, so, and your digital footprint is going to grow. 
Um, so, you know, that can be anywhere from your followers on LinkedIn um, to all of the new stuff you're going to keep on trying um, to do in order to promote yourself. So here's a screenshot of 1000 hires. It's kind of like, I don't know, um, anybody correct me if I'm wrong, if you've done the research. Um, I think it's like the new LinkedIn. Actually, it, you get to like link it to LinkedIn and it's a way of doing like an open cover letter or a video or some way to demo like, hey, I've got my eyeballs on this taxonomy job that I really, really want. I'm going to, you know, put on, um, record a video on how to do something here. Or um, I'm going to send a link to like my uh, eye captivating, um, you know, cover letter, and I'm going to put it on a, a, a thousand hires. Um, so that's always you're always going to be doing some form of you know promotion, or you're always going to be you know on some platform. You can pick one platform and you know, make it your own. You can constantly change your LinkedIn profile, which I do every time when I apply for a job. I actually tweak it and keyword the hell out of it every time when I'm applying for a job. Um, and that's something that everyone should do. You should also have visual examples of your work and you're always going to have to show visual examples. I'll have some visual examples um, towards the end of this deck. And then you're gonna to have to have a way that people can reach out to you. Um, one way for people to just book time and to network um, you know, digitally, since we're, we're still in the age of the pandemic and we're still not really meeting each other. I mean, I'm fully vaccinated and, um, you know, it's still good to have some kind of calendar or system where people can just book time and talk with you. Additionally, you will want to have informational interviews with people and you got to make it easy for these executives. So I would highly recommend you getting Calendly um, or having something on your web page. Um, I have a professional web page. I'm an independent um, consultant. And um, it's basically how I got this job to begin with. So we can go on to the next slide. So one of the things before you even start your e-portfolio, um, before you begin on your next career transition, or if you want to break into a career, guess what? You have to know yourself. And that's a little drawing I did of Socrates and you know, he's got, he's rolling his eyes. Um, but he kind of does roll his eyes in those, you know, sculptures. Uh, <laughs> you, um, you have to know your skills, you have to know your strengths, you have to know your loves, your hates, like what kind of people you like working with, what kind of tools do you like working with. Um, you have to know a little bit about your personality. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? For me, I'm an ambivert. I'm more introverted than extroverted. So I know that at the end of the day, working at a public library is going to drain me because of, um, you know, uh, people interaction. Not that I don't like people, but I just noticed that when I did work at the San Francisco Public Library, I did feel really depleted at the end of my days. And then towards the end of my, um, you know, uh, my probationary period, you know, I decided it just wasn't for me. And um, also like being at a public library, oftentimes, I would do the work of the digital asset management, or I would do the digitization, or I would manage a bunch of projects, but then I would be on the reference desk and then I would have to switch gears. So even knowing the little quirks about like how productive you are is really important. 
And then you have to know your personal style um, in order to, I think that develops over time, um, but your style is how you informally or formally communicate. It's how you write. Um, it's how you present yourself. It's um, the type of content you share. Everybody has a personal style digitally. Um, and so you really want to have that come across into your e-portfolio because that sets you apart from your other peers. And I swear to God, your professional will be wowed. Um, and then you have to know like the type of people you like working with and the environments. Do you like working in a noisy environment? Do you get, um, do you mind, you know, um, working in an office where you hear the um, espresso machine go off because you have, you know, a lot of Googlers having meetings next to your cubicle. So even your environment is important. So we can go to the next slide. And then it's all about in your e-portfolio and for the rest of your career and even to transition, it's showing how, um, showing, that you know how to do your stuff. Um, one of my things is like, I wanna expand into taxonomy consulting or taxonomy. Currently I'm, a di I'm the global dam librarian and I drive, I do basically strategy and I set up the bigger, the better mousetrap for this dam that I'm working in. But I really want to expand into more taxonomy and like going beyond the damn taxonomy. Um, so oftentimes I ask, I have to demonstrate what I know to stakeholders, a lot of stakeholders and lay people. And a lot of people in our profession don't know the terms. Um, you'll throw out taxonomy and somebody will go, are you a biologist? Uh, <laughs> so um, even like conveying simple concepts is important for you to develop in your e-portfolio and in your career. So this is just a recent example of how I told some of stakeholders that, hey, taxonomy is just more than, um, you know, assigning words to a structure. This is the amount of work and level of effort that has to go into it. And then we have to plan accordingly. So we can move on to the next slide. I want this um, Excel spreadsheet not to just say, hey, you're going to be doing Excel spreadsheets for the most of your life. Um, but in the corporate environment, it is pretty awesome if you can do Excel. Now, that's a given because everybody in your department, in marketing and communications, in the library world, there's always going to be somebody better with, than you at some kind of technical skill. So um, always brush up on Excel. I, I can't, you know, stress it enough, um, but you really want to go beyond, you know, just the basics of you know what everybody does. You you really want to you know whiz them around, whiz around your sheet with like a V lookup or do advanced functions. So I'm always like um, a, a proponent of do more than the basics. Sometimes this is just a screen cap of like how I average the time it took for users um to uh ingest assets in in the dam um it took somebody an average of four minutes and then that gave me like hmm, a little bit of pause is it because you know they really whiz through it or not so um you you have to also be a good researcher so you know that'll always stay with you no matter where you go if you're going to be in the public library, if you're going to be um, working for a nonprofit, you always have to like go beyond and say, "Hey, here, here's the you know, here's what's really happening. Here's the here's the story, 
or here's the SWOT analysis. So we can advance to the next slide. I don't know if you know how it is to move along. And so um, I developed because you know you have to know yourself, and because you know I was always developing. It just hit me, you know, recently that there is a sort of method that I followed all this time. And um, I summarized it in a tweet to a friend and I just said, okay, well, here's how we do a career transition for information professionals. And so this is my, the McCarthy method for uh, career transitioning. So I'll go into detail. Um, in just a bit, but I think the comic will be a lot more entertaining. So one, you got to know yourself, you have to know your skills, strengths, values, you know, and do a fierce inventory of all the things that you're good at. Um, I think it's going to be a really big boost, not to your ego, but to, you know, um, you know, when you're doing your e-portfolio, it is pretty nice to do like do a list of like everything that you've been proud about in at SJSU then write that down and then use that best of list as your way to like search for those artifacts if you don't have them folderized or organized already and then um, another thing is that oftentimes in a career transition or in your e-portfolio or whatever you're doing, you're always going to see a gap. You're going to see, you're going to know yourself, you're going to know what you're capable of, but then you have that goal, right? That goal can be the job. That goal can be the e-portfolio. That goal can be, you know, marrying your partner or getting a Ferrari. You have to know um, how much money you have in the bank to get that Ferrari. And that's sort of like the gap analysis. Um, you have to know your skills and match it to the job description to know what you're missing. Um, when you do your e-portfolio, guess what? You have to do a gap analysis. Um, you can look at gap analysis on, on the internet, but the most simple way is to start with what you know, look at your goal and see what's missing from your, um, from your, from, from what you have and your resources. Um, so we can go on to the next slide because it'll, it's a little bit more detailed. So here's how you know. Um, you can do any of the following. I would start with, now we've recently gotten like criticism um, with the Myers-Briggs and personality tests. Okay, yes. And yes, there's a little bit of confirmation bias. And yes, it's a little hokey. And yes, you could attribute a lot of this to Jungian psychology, which, you know, but I think it helps you understand what kind of worker you are or what kind of person you are. And then also when you do take a personality test, there are times in the Myers-Briggs, they'll, um, you know, they'll tell you, you know, the ideal, you know, uh, career for that. Um, who has taken a Myers-Briggs? Just raise your hand really quickly in the chat if you can. All right. Awesome. Okay. okay, so just Monica? Okay, okay, uh, a few. All right. Um, has anybody done Enneagrams? Okay, so it's a good way of like learning more about you, learning about like all the things that you like to do. There's also like um, in the comic, uh, there's also like your career interests and I map them to uh, your career animal. The career animal is something I created all on my own. Um, you'll have to see, but you'll be pleasantly delighted, amused, or weirded out. Okay, then do a wish list, um, create a vision board. Um, if you've never read what color is your parachute, shame on you. 
Um, and then also, if you are lost at the end of the day and really need to like interact with somebody, I would seek out a career strategist. If you can't find that, your best bet is to go to SJSU and use the resources there. And then a quick note before we move on to the next few slides, and um, I'll, I'll hurry up really quick, is that um, say you have a barrier. Like um, when I was at SJSU, I had this unfortunate diagnosis of breast cancer when I started. And um, I still had brain fog from the chemotherapy. So when I was actually doing my ePortfolio, I reached out to the Disabilities Resource Center and said, hey, I need a, um, accommodations on you know, doing my ePortfolio. I'm suffering from a little chemonesia and brain fog and I would like a, uh, an accommodation. And sure enough, I got it. Most recently in June, uh, I got a confirmation that I was on the uh, spectrum. So I'm neurodiverse. I was having a little bit of difficulty um, speaking in public, especially when I'm nervous. Um, and I started to ask for an accommodation. So. Knowing yourself really helps yourself. So we can move on to the next slide. Okay, gap analysis. So this again is what I talked about earlier. Um, you're always going to be looking at the job description and then you're going to do some form of matrix. Now I put the wrong matrix up in here, <laughs> but basically, um, my comic explains it as in the rows, um, you will put everything that the job requires, the skills, and then um, what they prefer, right? And then on the columns, you could, you know, slay it your way. You'll put your job experience or your uh, graduate experience in there, and then you will put a... Um, a check mark or a dot, you know, where you've, you know, where you have the, um, where you have actually have met that requirement. I'll show you in another slide so we can move on to the next. This is what it would look like at the end of the day. I don't know. This is a very fuzzy um, image. But as you can see on the rows, you have the job requirements. I literally, copy pasted it on a text file, stuck it onto a, um, an Excel spreadsheet. Then I made the columns of like all of the places where I worked from start, um, from latest to like to grad school. And this was for a digital asset management system, uh, digital asset manager job um, for workday.com. I just sent this, and a cover letter and my resume, and I got a, an interview immediately. Uh, the reason why I didn't get hired there is because they had an internal hire. So sometimes even creating a visual of what you can do um, will sometimes catch the eye of the recruiter or catch the eye of the um, hiring manager. So we can go on to the next slide. And I think it does, my comic does talk a little bit about career mapping. If you ever wanna know how to do or how I did that, you know, witchcraft there, um, you're free to email me and we can set up time and I could show you, um, I can send you the template or you know, I can walk you through the process and then go. Um, so after doing all of that research, you know like where your strengths are, you know what you're sort of not qualified for, and then you know what you're definitely qualified for. Then you um, practice your talk track, you practice your elevator um, pitch, you network, 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 and you change, 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 change. So here's this before. Um, that is an article that somebody from I Need a Library Job interviewed me. Um, and that was like really early in my career when I started out as an archivist in residence. 
And then as you can see, it says this interview is over a year old. Well, actually it's like almost a decade old and may no longer uh, be up to date or reflect the interviewee interviewees positions. And this is true, but you know, the, the essential thing in this article is that I still do comics. And even though I am kind of like um, grown past archives, I still love archives and I still, you know, will do um, uh, independent archives work for estates. Um, and, and that's something that I do on the side as a consultant, or I do, you know, if should I ever get like a big contract. Um, but that's another, that's another discussion altogether on how to be a consultant. Oof. Um, and then after, so you could see like early in my career, I have like some kind of interview, but then, you know, just recently, I would say this was about like a couple of weeks ago, I had to come up with the tag life cycle. I wish I can demo it to you. Um, I do, I did record an MP4 of it and I did it on XMind and you, it just animates itself. So you're always going to be developing new things. You're always going to, well, I hope you would always, if you are a more visual learner, you're always going to have to visually present um, things to stakeholders because I, I think in the corporate world, people don't read anymore and um, they don't, uh, well, they don't have time to like, um, you know, write things to, and everybody wants everything and all your emails in three bullet points. Um, so if you, you know, if you can master that now in grad school, please do now. Okay, so let's move. Um, I think we're, we've covered everything. So any questions? I know that that was a lot of ground to cover. I, I know that, um, uh, I went from e-portfolio to career transitioning. So if, uh, if you have any questions, uh, let's fire away. And then also, Tina, do we have like a sort of protocol on how yeah. we're taking questions? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be off. Um, we don't, we we're just gonna do first come first serve. So I'm gonna stop okay. the screen share so that I can access the chat without bothering people. Yay. Everything on my screen. Cool. Um, let me just close this. Awesome. And April and Tina, thank you so much. And everybody else, thank you. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. Um, let me stop my share. And then and I, I'll have like, um, I'll have some, um, I will have the comic for you. And then like, I will also share a link and make sure it's enabled for sharing um for all the career links and basically okay, it's just um it's just links to like what sort of free websites or web pages are there and then a short description so great. okay thank you yeah. um we will start with monica if you would like to ask your question and unmute yourself um sorry actually i don't have a question my hand was still raised from the uh from the question earlier okay. about personality tests. That's cool. Oh, no worries. Thank you. <laughs> well, now I know, know that you really have taken the Myers Briggs, Monica. Uh, uh, if you're if you're comfortable sharing what you are on the Myers Briggs, that's cool too. Okay. Oh yeah, um, I am comfortable. Um, I am an INFP. I've taken the Myers Briggs test um, a million times over the last probably fifteen years, and I've always gotten the same results. So I'm a big fan <laughs> of uh, Myers Briggs. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, I'm an INFJ. So yeah, INFPs are awesome. They they make the best therapists. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. We have, okay. we have a question from Leo. If you would like to unmute yourself. Hi, Tess. Thanks a lot. Um, I really enjoyed the presentation, and especially the part you said about uh, visual things. I'm wondering about your experience. You told us your particular experience of how long jobs last, but I'm curious, like what's your, um, I don't know, word on the street from other people you know, and just out there for LIS people, what we should kind of set ourselves up to expect, like how long jobs are gonna last or I don't know, anything on yeah. that. Yeah, you, you know what? Um... 
my productivity coach and my career strategist say, say there is no permanence. Um, and uh, my career strategist said that before COVID. And my productivity coach said that just, you know, to me like two weeks ago. So we never know the job market. We even job, uh, you know, economists can't, you know, figure out how long these jobs are. But with some of the federal government jobs or the government jobs, they do have, you know, contracts. And also with agencies, there are contracts. So, you know, I do a lot of contract work because it's flexible for me. And I always like, I'm, it's really hard for me to commit. Um, so, you know, when you are hired, Leo, Leo um, you, they'll, a recruiter will just make it very clear and they'll say, this is a six month contract. Um, sometimes it's extendable. You always want to ask if it's a contract to hire. Contract to hire is really desirable. Um, you always want to take a contract that's more than three months. Um, and um, in terms of like which industries, which jobs have the most job security or the lo most longevity, I would say government jobs, I tend to see people, you know, stay there a lot longer. I have a friend who works for the Ninth Circuit and she's been there for a, a, a long time. Um, I would say also the financial, um, you know, the financial industry, the brick and mortar type, um, but fintech, it's a little, it could be a little volatile. I don't know if I answered that question or if you were looking for more nuance. That, that's great. I'm just looking for a picture right now. It's, it's really helpful. You came and uh, shared with us. Yeah, and you, you, everybody, you should always be, you should always uh, have your resume to go because, you know, nothing breaks anyone's heart than just like getting laid off or losing your job. Um, I had a friend who was just really married to her job and she got laid off. She was a cataloger. And she was so heartbroken. I mean, it took her about a year to recover emotionally. And, you know, her and I had a talk like a couple of years ago. And she said, you know, if I wish I would have just, you know, kept my feelers out there. I wish I would have networked more or I wish I would have updated my resume. Then this wouldn't have been such a big surprise to me. So that's the thing that I really would like to um, tell people is always be ready um, because you never know. You, you can always get a better opportunity or you never know if you're going to get laid off. And so you have to be able to roll with all the punches. Okay, I hope that answered the question. Thanks very I just much. See a, great. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I see um, a lot of mutes, muted, you know, muted microphones. We have a question from Indira. Uh, she okay. says, Thank you for another great presentation. Would you consider doing a presentation on how to be a consultant? Yes, yeah. And you can also set up time with me on how to be a consultant. Um, the quick answer is, is that you, it's the type of uh, job where you are a Swiss army knife and you're constantly leveling up. Um, so when you start out as a consultant, you, um, for me, I started working for a local consulting firm uh, when I was at the airport. Um, and then I moved on to a national consulting firm uh, when I was working for Walmart. And then um, now I'm at a global consulting firm. Um, I do make a lot of money. Uh, I, I, I'm, that sounded weird. I, I, I am nicely compensated, but you know, with consultants, um, 
it that's a really hairy position to be in because you know they see you as like the know-it-all or the person for answers and um, if you happen to work for a company that's always cutting costs, guess what? They cut the consultants first. So you really have to make yourself um, uh, very, very indispensable. Um, so that's the short answer for consulting. And please hit me up on LinkedIn. Great. Thank you for the, the, the on consulting. Um, yeah. We don't see any other. No other questions, but no questions. How about like, um, you know, like fears about the e-portfolio, anything like that? Does everybody know about the Facebook group? Um, I would love you to talk about the Facebook group group tests and also uh, a fear I have about oh. it is that I couldn't figure out what format because I saw them in different formats and I'm like isn't there some format I can start putting things in already I just feel like I, I oh, want to get the, going but I'm not sure what I should put it in and then we saw yeah, yours for the e -portfolio. And it didn't matter yeah 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 um I let me see if I can share this in my uh screen right now but um I would, if you guys are doing your e-portfolio, um, and somebody did say that they would like to know about the Facebook group, you know what, I'll, I, um, I will see, I think I'm still in that Facebook group. <laughs> and I haven't been into Facebook for a while because, you know, I'm, I haven't been really excited about Facebook recently. Um, but there is a Facebook group. Group. And it's basically the eport group. And I did see somebody that that you have to be invited into it. So yeah, um, that's why it's important to network. Um, so then getting back to your question, um, I would organize all of my um, artifacts. So um, I would have in folders, all of the classes and all of my best work in, in a folder structure or on a spreadsheet, right? And then I would look through the entire competence and competencies and I would um, make sure if this class maps to competency J or something like that, I think Right now um, in, at SJSU, when you do enroll for a class, I think that when I was there, they used to say, well, this will meet competency M and this one will meet competency J. So, you know, make sure when you're taking your classes, look and see, you know, if, you're, if the class you're taking um, will meet that competency um, because Sure enough, you're gonna have a project in that class. That project in that class where you got an A or you did exceptionally well, guess what? Is going to be your artifact that you're going to be putting into your e-portfolio. But uh, the savvy thing would be to also do as much volunteer work or work like what, like what Tina and April are doing um, where they've led meetings, where they can demonstrate, you know, that they can do competency, I don't know, from the top of my head, that one where you, uh, that one on management would kind of fit there. So another thing that's important is to also find a group of people that you want to do the e-portfolio with. So if you don't get into that Facebook group, fine. You know, make up your own meetup group and get a bunch of people that you like together and work on your e-portfolio together and support each other. And then you can even put on your resume that you started up a meetup group around, you know, um, e-portfolio completion. So always use everything in, in your resume if it's, if you don't have a lot of um, regular old job um, uh, job experience. 
How many Facebook groups are there? I don't know. I haven't been on Facebook in three months. Um, let's see. All right. And then it says, can you talk? Let's see. Can you talk about the different website fo formats for an e-portfolio? Okay, so this is a fun one from Rachel. Uh, I would do it on Medium if I had to do it all over again, um, <laughs> because I just like how um, how neat it is. Uh, let me just um, let me see if I have like all the links here. Let's see. Go here. Go here. And I'm gonna do. Here's the talk. So I'm going to share this with all, everybody. Um, let's see, make sure I got this sharing down. And then at least you'll have something to change to anyone with the link. Okay, good. Yay. Copy the link. Anyone with the link can now access this. So I've copied this. I pasted it in chat. Oops, I think I pasted it in chat. All right. And um, it's basically like a little sh uh, sheet. It's called All the Career Links. And it's um, stuff that I reviewed like a, um, like, a, uh, like a couple of weeks ago. And they're more, they're more avant-garde. So most people in your graduate school program will do a WordPress blog or they'll do Wix, or they'll be doing Weebly or Pixa. Um, so the two columns there, the 10 great portfolio websites for freelance writers and the nine uh, best free portfolio websites, they actually have like a lot of great, um, you know, uh, sites that they recommend and I, I like it. Um, I don't want to go with Fuddy Duddy because that's not my brand. Um, again, you have to know yourself. Um, and then also I included UX writing. So why did I, you know, include UX writing? Because I've seen a lot of it uh, when I was at Google. And I had had the experience of working at Chevron and I saw, you know, how tight their communications were. I worked for um, the information design and communications, um, you know, business unit for Chevron. And then I've also worked for a UX team at Google. And then I've also worked for the hardware um, retail arm um, at Google doing digital asset management. And I have always been impressed with how UX writers simplify and just say things. And I think it's really crucial to have beautiful, elegant, simple writing in your e-portfolio. And again, I'm giving you all the information that I wish I should have done had I had to do my e-portfolio all over again. I don't think I'll ever revisit that e-portfolio. I, I will revamp things into Behance, or I will do more Medium articles now that I've gained a lot more knowledge in digital asset management and taxonomy. Um, so your knowledge will change, your tastes and preferences will change, you don't have to stay married to your e-portfolio, but you can use your e-portfolio to evolve, just like you'll use your LinkedIn profile to change and evolve there. Um, I also included Adobe and Behance um, because I really think that the way we're going now is that we're going more visual. I see a lot in you know, marketing and communication, people are more hungry for visual content. Um, so if you do do videos um, and you have a YouTube channel, um, I would suggest um, starting a YouTube channel and just talking about things that you really love. So if you're in the library field and you love comics, guess what? You can have a YouTube channel, put it up there, and then share the really good stuff for your LinkedIn or your ePortfolio. Say you're really, you know, obsessed about zines, you know, like me, even though that I haven't done a zine in a, a long time. 
I still love zines. And so um, you can also, you know, do a YouTube channel on zines. So you don't have to have librarian-esque things to share information and to sort of be a librarian. Your interests and who you are are, I think, more important in getting yourself out there and learning who you like to work with and where you get your energy. So it's more of like finding a groove and then um, making sure that you're happy. Um, because I think the more you do what you love, um, the better you work and the funner it is. And life is too short. Um, okay, so it is 726. Uh, I got a lot of thank yous. Um, anybody else have any other questions? Or is there something that wasn't clear and I didn't, you know, explain it well? You can also sh throw that at me. Um, I was just wondering uh, how many people have actually ever read your e-portfolio? Like, does is it real or or is this just like your closet, you know? Because I password protected it, nobody, you know, read it. Um, <laughs> because, I, you know, that's what um, I think is going to happen to mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to, like, you know, guess what? You're a librarian. You have to be able to know SEO and, um, uh, you know, search, you know, engine optimization. If you really do want your stuff, you know, out there, don't password protect it. Um, but my, I, I had an e-portfolio um, professor who was not the worst, but the most, I got the hardest person. I'm not naming names, so I'm not going to warn you or anything like that. But he, this person hated everything I did. But I ended up doing a better e-portfolio. I would get jealous on the Facebook group because, you know, somebody go, oh, I passed competency, yay, oh, it was so easy. And, you know, my professor loves me. And I'm like, I would be going like, oh, man, my professor just hates, you know, just gave me the feedback that, you know, this evidence is weak and I don't know what I'm going to do. And, you know, the rest of my career is over. Um, but I pushed myself. <laughs> oh. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, um, if you haven't um, done, uh, if you haven't found that Yahoo group on like um, on the professors at SJSU, I don't know where that link is, but it's out there somewhere. And then rate my professor is also another good, um, you know, uh, resource to find out which SJSU professor will be, you know, easy peasy. And then, you know, um, apply for that, you know, register for that course. <laughs> um, Okay. Yeah. Um, again, if people want to be added to the Facebook group, you can add me as a friend and I will invite you directly. And I linked my Facebook profile in the chat here. Um, also in the chat is a link to Tess's slides. Thank you for sharing them, Tess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you. you to refer to it after our program. There is also a link to our post program survey, which is really helpful just to understand a little bit more about the analytics behind how you got to our um, presentation and any feedback or questions that you have that we can redirect to test after tonight. Um, yeah, well, thank you everyone for joining. Tess, is there anything else you would like to No, Tina, you? that was really awesome that you, um, you know, uh, share, shared your resources. So oh, that's you. another thing is <laughs> continue to network. Um, you never know, like, your, how you're going to get your next job. I, I uh, was applying for a job at Atlassian, and my colleague at work had, you know, the experience that they were looking for, I referred my colleague and yeah. guess what? She got the job. Yeah. Um, really so, help. Yeah. So networking really helps.
Yeah. yeah. Well, thank and you. I will send out a comic uh, to Tina and company, and hopefully um, everybody will get it who, who, who uh, came today. And I thank you for your time. Well, thank Keep you for on trucking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all of your information. I know um, it's a lot. <laughs> no, it's great. We also have so much, such a paper trail. So it's really nice to have, you know, people. <laughs> <laughs> sharing their resources in case you weren't oh good 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 good, good good um, yeah we'll and um i left my contact information uh on the pdf that you know i'll send you but you guys okay. can always hit me up on linkedin i'm always happy to also like look at resumes too oh wow thank you so much yeah. for your time all right toodles everybody have a great evening have and great thank evening. you for your time Thank you, Tess. Thank you, everyone. Bye, for Tina. Time. Bye, April. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Good night. Bye.